Once upon a time, we were both happy. Everything was fine, then suddenly it leave. I was left behind, broken in pieces. Then you'd reappear. Morning show. Things put on pancakes and rhyming bear bear intros. Austin confused about whose sister married the bros. In the UK, dooley doo tugs on our heartstrings. Gaming morning show is one of our favorite things. It's Paul. It's Paul. Ah, who are we kidding? Pumpkin spice and fall. Paul. We all know our favorite thing is the season of Paul. Pumpkin spice latte time. Besides the tasty drinks, the weather is cooler. We get the most time where it's cooled off, but it's not always rainy. Sometimes it's rainy for part of the day, but then it dries up and it's just a nice, cool, cloudy day. I like that. There's football on. Man, did we, did we have a great football weekend. Uh, both of our teams performed to the tippy top of their tippiest top of performance, and Boy, football is fun. That's got to be enough for all of the hosts of Gaming Morning Show, right? Right? Okay, so when Club Penguin changed, they, like, changed everything. Like, they got more mainstream. And I wrote them an email. And I was like, you know, it would be really nice if you guys could go back to the way things were. Because the original Penguins, we really miss it. I speak on behalf of all of the OG Penguins. And we all are really upset. Print, you've changed, man. You're the Lorax for Club Penguin. I was. <laughs> I speak for the penguins. <laughs> well, penguin begins with a P. So, happy Paul, everyone, from all of us at GMS. Broadcasting live from Redner's Rescued Cat Figurine Museum in Manatomy Falls, Wisconsin. When Sean Redner told his wife, Hillary, that he wanted to turn their Wisconsin home into a museum of cat figurines, she had a predictable response. We're gonna do what? We'll do that some other time, huh? Okay, then. Broadcasting live from the same places they've been since 2020. It's time for Gaming Morning Show. Morning! Gamer. Gamer. It's Gaming, it's Gaming Morning, Morning Show. Show. It's great, it's great to hear, to hear myself, myself in multiple, multiple places. places. Where, Where am I coming, coming through, through from? from? Hello! <laughs> Hello. So, so good, good to see you. See you. Thank, Thank you for being here, here wherever you may be, 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 Oh, yeah, sounds fine. All right, fantastic. <laughs> Wonderful. Lots of Ryan after having no voice for, like, the entire last week. Here we go. Uh, morning, gamer. It's good to see you. Thank you for being here. It is Monday, January 30th, 2023. Very excited for today's show. We are going to have two live interviews. One Five Questions GMS where we talk about the Super Bowl. 
It's supposed to be me not, like, gurgling. That was supposed to be a cat purr. That's <laughs> how my cat always purrs. Rears the head back. <laughs> has to have liquid in the mouth for some reason. <laughs> really clears up the throat. It helps. It helps. Give it. Uh, that's coming up. Drip cleared up. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if you need to kind of get rid of some things, do your do your gurgling, otherwise known as a soup <laughs> bowl. Uh, that's happening uh, February twelfth. We'll tell you more about that with Sam Proof, who is the person behind the Cute Avalanche stream, which is a fantastic Twitch channel. We've uh, sent you there on via the raid before, where you can watch all the wonderful kittens just hanging out, playing games, doing things. It's really cute an avalanche of cuteness it's beautiful that's coming up at 8 20 a.m pacific time today and then uh in about an hour from now at 7 25 a.m pacific time we're going to talk to young shin vandersipe who is an attorney for a uh, kroll and mooring and this is going to be to discuss what's going on uh in europe specifically with the european union uh, as the Parliament's calling for a long-term video games and esports strategy. So we're going to find out a little bit about why that's important. Uh, there's some components of this that we want to ask Young Shin about coming up at 7.25 a.m. Pacific Time today. Uh, good morning to IMJF Down to open this up. First! It's good to see a hiya to you right back. There are five of you. I think. <laughs> this, this is my creative idea, Sean. If we uh -huh. ever, you know get invaded as a show like all of a sudden get surrounded by a whole bunch of, of other shows uh -huh, then right, right. we're going to turn my echo on and that way nobody will think it's just you and me they'll think it's a room full of people right that'll get them I think it makes sense uh, it looks yeah. like Arturo's ready to go for the interview about cute avalanche too Meow. yeah he's ready he's, uh, he's going to sit on my mouse so hopefully I don't need that anytime soon uh, but we should be okay. But that's what cats do. They sit on mice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mice. Which, it's also the name of an animal. It is. Yes, it's true. Uh, good morning to <laughs> Kalaf, who's here as well. Warm welcome to our head of research and development. Uh, oh, that's what we're doing. Sorry. <laughs> Actually, there an L in there? <laughs> yeah, there might have been. I think I was actually pretty close to that, though. Mornolin, gamer. It's good to see you. Uh, today is National Bubble Wrap Day. We'll also introduce you to our National Day of the Day. That's our topic of the day. Later this hour, a story of an Arkansas refuge that cared for a serval that spent six months on the loose in Missouri. Hmm. Very specific set of circumstances there for that serval. Huh. There is no confirmation whether or not uh, Harry Styles was there, though. Arkansas's favorite harpsichord player. I don't think he's had a chance to get back home for a while. So. Oh, Been out on the road. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully you this know, isn't his serval. Oh, no. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be upsetting. Stop keeping wild animals for pets, Harry Styles. Yeah. Almost called him Mr. Clarence, but that's not how middle names work. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Doc. Uh, also, next hour, Fish spends owner's money, reveals credit card info on a YouTube stream. Yep. This is a good one. I mean, come on. I mean, what, what a better Monday story than that? Truly, uh, this can be good. It's uh, happening uh, to a Japanese YouTuber, so we'll have that coming up a little bit later in the show. Uh, today, Sean, is National Croissant Day. It's National Croissant? Croissant, croissant Day. Croissant? Uh, so we're asking, what's the best way to have a croissant? I feel like the croissant is incredibly versatile, so I think we're going to get a variety of answers today. Yeah. yeah, I like a good croissant, especially if it's hot and fresh. Nice and flaky. Delicious. That's what I mean, though. It's versatile. You can get breakfast croissants. You can have a breakfast sandwich, right? Throw some egg and some ham, some cheese in there. Life is good. You can also have a sweet croissant where you fill it up with chocolate. That's probably the best thing ever. So, I mean, a lot of different options available to you if you're looking for ways to enjoy a croissant. Indeed. Yeah, I like a good uh, croissant just, like, by itself. Um, I don't necessarily like made into sandwiches because they're just so flaky and messy um 
that uh, it, it just it gets all over the place. I mean, when they're a warmer sandwich, like the aforementioned breakfast sandwich, I, I, that mm -hmm. happens more often. One of my favorite types of uh, croissant sandwiches, though, are those platters you get from Costco. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. And those are just like cold, regular sandwiches, like ham and cheese, turkey and cheese. Those are amazing. It's pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know you were so anti-croissant. Not anti, I just prefer to have them just plain by themselves. I know, but here I go to the extremes, <laughs> right? <laughs> they gotta be hard to cut, though. That's the only thing, is I've never had to, like, yeah. cut my cut my own croissant, you know? Like, right. I feel like there's no way to, like, get to the dead center of a croissant. Three licks? <laughs> That's what I'm doing wrong. To cut my croissant, I should stop using a knife and just start <laughs> licking it. That's how you get to the center. Makes sense. Uh, good morning, nice chat to Keith Anthony who's here. Nice chat! Uh, good morning, good afternoon, hope you're well. Cut down the middle and fill with clotted cream and jam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. There is no universe where the word clotted cream won't make me be like... Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, it's an unfortunate name. And it's, it's not that bad of a thing, right? Clotted cream is... No. Like, basically, like, heavy cream or something like that, right? It's, uh, like a thick cream. Kind of, uh, I don't know. Not not quite cream, not quite butter. Yeah, but somewhere around there. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. According to Wikipedia, thick cream made by heating full cream cow's milk using steam or water bath and then leaving it in a shallow pan to cool slowly... During this time, the cream content rises to the surface and forms clots. I mean, listen, there's no way for me not to think about blood when you're talking about clotting, so... Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. So. But then again, uh, where Keith lives, they eat blood sausage, so... That's true. That's also crazy. Do love jam, though. Big fan of jam. <laughs> Croissants, too. <laughs> uh, Down says the best way to have a croissant is in the mouth. Perfect. <laughs> Just in the mouth. Just... <laughs> That's good. Uh, blood sausage, do we? Right, Keith? I've, I've, I've heard blood sausage quite a bit. Coming from the UK. Could be wrong. Oh, gosh. And then Downs brings up black pudding. Although that doesn't sound that awful. Or is it blood pudding? Am I, am I mixing up things now? That's probably completely understandable. So you'll have to let me know. Ugh. So bring me some bloody pudding. So, oh, no. <laughs> nope, nope. That, that wasn't even fun to say. Nope, not a big fan of that. I played some recreational Rocket League yesterday, and by some, I mean one singular game. Nice. Did he win? Uh, no. We got absolutely, utterly destroyed. Oh, 0 for 1. Yeah. Well, because uh, I was watching the uh, football games. We'll get to sports coming up at 7.50 because already alluding to it, but our friend uh, IMJF Downs pointed out that the Eagles are in the Super Bowl, so we'll tell you what the Super Bowl official matchup is. Uh, but Hefty Sun was sick of watching football and uh, asked for my attention so I uh, said okay sounds good uh, and he goes would you play Rocket League with me and I was like sure and so we played one game of Rocket League and lost 12 to 2 ouch yeah. Yeah. like I said I, I've not been like scored so many double digit goal goals allowed uh, other than playing on Switch so many times I allowed double digit goals on Switch hmm Maybe that's just where all the good players play. Could be. This whole time we've been sitting here on these we've, low we've been brow machines. Mode. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, I and I can say opening. Uh, Keith says, and I can opening say black pudding is horrendous. I'm guessing you're saying opening like a can or opening some black pudding is gross. So so what is Oh my gosh. So what what is black pudding? Oh, black pudding is basically blood sausage says down. Okay. 
I don't think that really clarifies a ton for me because I just haven't <laughs> tried them, but just just assume it's gross and we'll be good. I mean, listen, food food is like a lot of marketing if you think about it, and whoever like signed off on the word blood being in any sort of food description. Like how are how are you supposed to like win with that word in the in the name? Yeah. Also, <laughs> car carar isn't it carotid artery? Right. Oh oh oh! oh I need to see that. What? Arturo is pawing at the ball ball oh. on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it hard to line up shots when there's a, there's a cat paw right over the screen. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. It'd be helpful to see that, please. Thank you. Ah, there we go. Arturo must have moved. <laughs> he is very interested, though. I'm surprised he hasn't done this before. I mean, so is it carotid artery, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's like when your artery is, is really, f like, full of plaque? No, that's just the name of an artery. Oh. What's... Oh, carotid artery is just the name of an artery? Yeah. Like... Oh, it's like like the jugular? Yeah, jugular is a vein, carotid, arteries, and artery. Oh, really? I thought it was one that was, like, totally full of bad stuff and you're going to die. No, it's just the name of an artery. It goes up to your head and brain. So if your carotid artery was full of stuff, that's bad. That'd be real bad. That's, okay. like, stroke bad. Okay, gotcha. Okay, cool. We're learning together. <laughs> By together, I'm probably the only one who didn't know any of this stuff. Um... Yeah, I doubt, or uh, uh, Kalaf says, get those blood oranges out of here, which, that's fair. I guess I have eaten my fair share of blood oranges over the years. But, you know, blood oranges are not meat. Sausage is meat. True. And to my recollection, animals that are used for food bleed more than fruits that are used for food. <laughs> On average, yeah. <laughs> You can't when you when you segment it out and you take the average, usually that is the case. Gross. Uh good morning and nice chat to uh, Kate Zaid says love croissants. Nice chat. Such a big fan of croissants. I do think you have it absolutely right though. Warm, buttery, flaky. Yep. Nice and fresh. But this is definitely gonna be one of those shows where us starting out talking about croissants is going to change into us discussing foods that have the word blood in it. <laughs> Sounds right. <laughs> I kind of picture a poll in the future. How do you feel about foods that have the word blood in it? <laughs> Happy National Croissant Day. <laughs> Just what the <laughs> croissant people wanted. How did they get onto bloods? What? I'm so confused. <laughs> Oh, and uh, and Caleb says throw Bloody Marys down the drain as well. <laughs> See, but that's also gross. Ugh, I don't know. Clearly, I have a thing. Let's work. Uh, nice chat. Nice chat to Drew Mega, who's lurking while working. Thank you for being here. Reminder: you can always take us in audio only mode on Twitter Spaces if necessary. On Twitch, audio only is there as an option, and if you're on YouTube Premium, you can listen to us in a. Uh, minimized mode on your phone as well we're also available search your podcast platform for gaming morning show and we are usually there roughly about 10 30 a.m pacific time every single weekday so some options available to you to find us on your platform of choice uh here's a black pudding description it's a distinct regional type of blood sausage originating in the uk and ireland it is made from pork or beef blood with pork fat or beef suet and a cereal, usually oatmeal, oat groats or barley groats. The high proportion of cereal along with the use of certain herbs such as penny royal serves to distinguish black pudding from blood sausages eaten in other parts of the world. Hmm. I, I don't think that it, helped. It didn't sell it for me, no. No. 
I mean, it literally says it's made from pork or beef blood. Yeah. It's a bad start. Ugh. Okay. Uh, Kate's Aid says, I've never had a Bloody Mary. I don't want veggies ruining a good time. You can, get blood, you can get Bloody Marys with like a, a chicken wing and a half slab of cow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, some good pieces of bacon. Yeah. They put them on those cool little swords. Nice. Then we can duel afterward. Choo -choo -choo. Uh, Keith uh, says, how do we feel about Nutella filled croissants? I'd be okay with it. Some would say they're life-changing. I never knew Nutella was so erotic. Keith does say it's not as bad as Haggis, but it falls in the same category. I think uh, I don't want to talk about that anymore. I think all I want to get the news. The morning gaming news is all about Haggis. Oh, crap. Okay, well, we'll find out <laughs> on the other side. Because it's time for said gaming morning show, morning gaming news at six twenty-seven West Coast time, nine twenty-seven out east, and two twenty-seven for those watching GMS in the UK. Do -do -do. All right, we're back. It's great to be back. Here's hashtag video game expert Sean. Good morning. It is Monday, January thirtieth, twenty twenty-three, and this is your gaming morning show, morning gaming news. Um, some news over the weekend. Um. It's not bad for a Monday. We've had some pretty rough Mondays, but this one is is acceptable. Um, and the first one, there there were some new PlayStation commercials that ran uh, primarily during football this weekend, um, and they made interesting, like semi new announcements during them in a very like lackluster way. One was a, a new, uh, just a brief teaser trailer for Spider Man Two on the PlayStation Five. Uh, kind of reconfirming that it's going to come out this calendar year, which is an interesting way to do it, but they did it nonetheless. Uh, but our news story this morning is about a uh, tease of an unannounced game that sure looks a lot like a new Uncharted game. <laughs> um, so this is from Wesley LeBlanc of Game Informer. Um, this is an ad called uh, Live from PlayStation 5, and it showcases a few of the console's biggest titles, both past and upcoming, in a fictional news segment. And among the clips are two shots that we don't recognize, and they remind us a lot of Uncharted. Um, the fictional news segment highlights the efforts of Spider-Man, Kratos, Ratchet and & Clank, and Akons of the upcoming game Final Fantasy 16. Um, and more from other games like Gran Turismo 7 and Returnal. However, amidst the clips, there are two shots that show what appears to be a young woman in a mysterious cave holding a torch as she approaches an ancient relic, uh, as first reported by Video Games Chronicle. Uh, you can see the clips uh, in a video that's linked in the story that we, we linked in the chat. Um, so take a look for yourself and see what you think, but it, it's very Uncharted-esque. So uh, we'll have to see what that turns into. Isn't this exactly what, you know, ads want you to do when they decide to throw in something random? Just have people start becoming internet sleuths and comparing side-by-side -side screenshots. Nah, that definitely looks like the cave that was in that one game. Nope. So it's probably working exactly how they had hoped. Yeah, um, I'm sure it is. And, well, it's, it's interesting to see where this goes because uh, Naughty Dog president Neil Druckmann has, has gone on record saying... We're we're done and we're moving on from the naughty uh, from the Uncharted franchise. Um, so what's this then? <laughs> Is this recharted re the new Naughty Dog franchise? Right, they're not going to call it Uncharted, <laughs> but they're going to be like, yeah, it's charted. It's, it's about uh, Nathan Blake. Not the same. It's different. I promise. <laughs> So we'll keep an eye on this. Um, I mean, I love the Uncharted game, so uh, anything that's in that realm, um, even if it's not true Uncharted and it's some sort of spinoff, uh, I'm sure it will be fantastic. So, uh, we'll keep an eye on it. We'll see what happens. Uh, speaking of things that are coming sometime in the future, this one coming in April, we have a new teaser for the upcoming Super Mario Brothers movie. Um, these just keep 
getting trickled out slowly. This one shows off cat suit Mario and a little bit more of Donkey Kong, which is fun. Um, cat suit Mario looks much like he does in the uh, in the games, so they they nailed that. And Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong uh, looks and sounds fantastic. So if you want to see the the teaser, it is linked as always in the the story we provided. Um, this is the most Donkey Kong dialogue we've heard in any of the trailers so far. Um, and it reveals that uh, Seth Rogen's Donkey Kong is uh, basically just Seth Rogen. No, he, he, he didn't change his voice. Okay. All. It's just Seth Rogen. You know, this uh, Donkey Kong character reminds me a lot of that character from that movie Sausage Party. It's weird. <laughs> didn't expect that to happen. Yeah. I'll admit I miss, like, both if not more than two opportunities to watch this trailer during the games yesterday because I was utilizing the commercials to do some other stuff because it's busy during the games. But I saw that they were on, and I went to point it to, to the kids. and be like, oh, look, new Mario trailer. But that was too late. It was, it was already gone. And, you know, there's a DVR, and I could have rewound and stuff. But, you know, the football. Well, now, now you have it in LinkedIn chat. So Exactly. Soon. I was waiting for the <laughs> gaming morning show, morning gaming news. That's right. How did you know? Um, in our last news story, a uh, sadder piece of news uh, that happened over the weekend. Annie Wershing, uh, who is an actress, uh, she was in 24 and many other things, but in the video game world, she voiced uh, Tess in The uh, the Last of Us. Um, she passed away this weekend at the age of 45 after a prolonged battle with cancer. Um so uh, definitely thoughts out to her family. Um, Neil Druckmann sent out a tweet after he found out. He said, quote, just found out my dear friend Annie Wershing passed away. We just lost a beautiful artist and human being. My heart is shattered. Thoughts are with her loved ones. He also posted a link to a GoFundMe that has been set up for her family. Um, she's survived by her husband, who's an actor, Stephen Full, and her three children, Freddie, Ozzy, and Archie. Uh, her husband also issued a statement, said, quote, there is a cavernous hole in the soul of this family today, but she left us the tools to fill it. She found wonder in the simplest moments. Uh, she didn't require music to dance. She taught us not to wait for adventure to find you. Go find it. It's everywhere. Uh, so thoughts and uh, everything out to her family. And... Uh, Hope she's resting peacefully somewhere. Yeah, I mean, that's incredibly sad news, passing away at 45. And the uh, takeaway I've had from The Last of Us is just how good the voice acting was from that video game. And, of, of course, Annie, mm -hmm. uh, seemingly a very big part of it. So, yeah, rest in peace, Annie. Um, and moving on to Out Today, we had some highlights uh, we, uh, lots, lots of games out today. Uh, so many. I had to cut it down. Uh, I didn't want this to go on and on and on. Uh, so we have Trek to Yomi out on Switch. And for the most prestigious award in video game focus, morning shows your favorite segment within a segment within a segment. Today's name of the morning goes to Capybara Madness out on Switch. I feel like maybe you didn't actually have that many names at all. I did. I, I, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't have to edit the list at all. Sorry. You lied to us. Yeah. I was just happy to see something out. <laughs> you lied <laughs> to us and, and did it on a Monday of all the days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just rip off, rip it off like a bandit. Oh, okay. Get yeah, the lying yeah. out of the way early. <laughs> yes, we know, you know, Sean's always been such a big liar on Monday specifically. So might as well just first hour, let us know. Congratulations, Capybara Madness. Of all the many choices we could have picked today, you are today's winner. Uh, will it become Name of the Month? Find out. We're very close to the end of January, which means we'll name our Name of the Month. Uh, the text there says find out at the end of January. How about we tell you next week, the first full week of February, and if you're a Patreon subscriber, you have access to win it right away. Uh, we still need to name our winner from the Patreon giveaway for our December Name of the Month, so we uh, need to do that soon. If you're in the Patreon-only Discord, that is where you can find how to win the Name of the Month giveaway. There's also access to uh, early uh, early access, rather, to everything that we make, an exclusive subscriber show, uh, which we need to get back on the books for February, so we'll be doing that as soon as we can. Find out more at GamingMorningShow.tv and click on where to find GMS or go straight to Patreon.com slash GamingMorningShow. Thanks for the news, Sean. 
You bet. Thank you. Uh, it is 6.36 now on the West Coast. Uh, young Shin Vandersype will join us coming up at 7.25 a.m. Pacific time today. We're going to talk about uh, some things video game related in the European Parliament. So that's coming up at 7.25 a.m. Pacific time today. And then about an hour after that, we'll talk to Sam Proof, who is the person behind the Cute Avalanche Twitch stream. And we'll talk about uh, what is happening with a foster event, cat foster event, coming up on February 12th called the Super Bowl. Nice. That one was much better. That was, that was a lot better. That was less gurgly and more uh, almost rolling of your arse. It's so close. Yeah, it's so amazing. close. Uh, I was going to actually bring a Hefty Floof in to be my designated purr, mm -hmm. but Hefty Floof is sleeping, so. Yeah, and it's not worth it. it Hefty Floof would just chase the Rocket League ball. Exactly. <laughs> I like how, I think Arturo is chasing your screen more in the last month than in the yeah. entire two-plus year history of the show. Yeah. First he was interested in you a week or so ago, and now chasing the ball. I'm surprised he's not watched us play Rocket League before because he's on the desk frequently. Now that he has, though, it's opened up. Like, we can't put the genie back in the bottle now. Yeah. yeah. He did get bored rather quickly and laid down. Well, it's tough to be awake for 20 minutes, so. <laughs> it's true. I mean, we tried to break down Hefty Floof's full day, 24-hour cycle. We're pretty sure Hefty Floof sleeps for 20 hours a day. Yeah, that sounds about right. I swear that's more than any cat I've ever owned, but, you know, I could not have owned a cat for a while and just forgot. <laughs> <sighs> All right, well, hopefully uh, we didn't set precedent and Arturo is going to chase the Rocket League ball the entire rest of the day. Uh, in chat, uh, we have uh, Kalef saying Black Pudding, Bloody Marys, and Croissants. A part of a balanced vampire breakfast. <laughs> Austin, a vampire, born in 1933. Croissants. Nice. It's a little bit of a reach, but we'll allow it. Uh, Seth Rogen's a pretty natural DK. That was kind of a no-brainer. I mean, I, you seem like you're you're on board, so just very much pointing out that it's Seth Rogen, clearly. It's, yeah, it's just Seth Rogen. He even does his laugh. I know exactly what you thought. I can hear Seth yeah. Rogen in my ears right now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, good morning to uh, Austin Attack 12. It is good to see you. Nice chat. Uh, let's say hi to someone else who we haven't had a chance to, and that is the one and only Bear Bear, who sits there and laughs straight at us when we don't open up the curtain and have a chance to have Bear Bear look right at us. That's right. I rhymed at us with at us. I ain't scared. Neither is Bear Bear. Show us that you're not impaired. Bear Bear went on a little bit of a bender this weekend, so. Nice weather. Safe about it, though. So. Yeah. Look at you. Look at you, Bear Bear. Um, hey, will you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. uh, when we get to sports at 7.50 this morning, uh, I'm going to have some things to say about the football games yesterday. Uh-huh. Um, if you could go shopping for a, a shirt for Bear Bear to indicate... Who Hefty's rooting for for the Super Bowl? That'd be great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I could probably check that down. It's a very angry Sunday for me. <laughs> Don't want to talk about it anymore. So. All right. Uh, good morning to uh, Austin Tech, as I mentioned. Apparently, Kalaf is an Apex legend. The Apex legend. Uh, so thank you for being here. Said, so, well, I try. Uh, because of the butter or animal proofing related reason or product-related reason as to why Austin Tech has never had a croissant. I want to say going back to last year when we maybe talked about croissants, I think that's one thing we learned about Austin Attack 12. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just, I think croissants are very delicious. Yeah. yeah. I kind of want to, I kind of want a chocolate one, though. Yeah. We, uh, we, uh, have a, uh, French bakery up in Portland. There's a few of them that uh, that we like that has really tasty croissants. And we were just up there, and we didn't go. Now I regret it. Uh, can we just skip work today and go to do that? Yeah, we could do that. Sweet. Let's do it right now. All right, uh, it's a 6.41. Time to uh, see what we're tracking at this hour. You can news if you wanna. 
And that's the story of a serval that was abandoned by Harry Clarence Styles. Yes, this is a true story that we're about to share with you. This is a story from Ben Hooper of UPI because it happened in the state of Arkansas where the most famous butts accord player of all time exists. And that is Harry Clarence Styles. Uh, ben Hooper of UPI writes the following. An Arkansas refuge is caring for a serval that spent about six months out in the cold without any protection. They just left it out there with no hope for survival. Abandoned. It's ridiculous. But here's the specifics. An African serval was captured for at least... Uh, after at least six months on the loose in Missouri, it's now receiving veterinary care for multiple ailments at a wildlife refuge in Arkansas. A wildlife refuge said the serval, which is expected to be, or uh, believed to be about five years old, have been spotted wandering loose in Missouri on multiple occasions over the last six months. The uh, serval was trapped on a farm, and then the uh, officials from the Missouri Game and Fish Department contacted this refuge See about bringing the African cat a new home. The marketing director for the refuge says the serval is now being treated for multiple health issues. Said the serval's tail was also injured as a result of suspected frostbite and about an inch had to be surgically removed. All of this has to now be treated. She's being kept under observation and quarantine at our on-site vet hospital. And all of that happened because Harry Clarence Styles let his serval loose without supervision. Unacceptable. Just when you think this, you know a person, Sean. Yeah. It's uh yeah, just so irresponsible. Arkansas's favorite harpsichord player. I kind of feel bad that any story that has to do with Arkansas now immediately gets tagged to Harry Clarence Styles. Well, I mean, that's uh that's what you get for being the most famous Arkansonian Butts Accord. Indeed. <laughs> uh, Austin Tag 12 would like us to know that Harry Styles would never have a serval. Oh, Legend. well, yeah, because they're social animals. He has three. <laughs> <laughs> Can't have just one serval. Because it gets sad. <laughs> Also has a cheetah. Lots of different big cats. I've heard Harry Clarence Styles really enjoys his panther. <laughs> Alright, we have Carolina a Carolina Panther. <laughs> Not an Arkansas <laughs> Panther. <laughs> Alright, we got something off the top. This is a report from one Kalaf, our head of research and development, saying, In local gaming news, uh, Kiki Lo hosted a, an Apex Legends hide-and-seek event yesterday, dragging in participants from around the world to both hide and seek. It's good that they were recruited to do both, because otherwise it would be a very odd hide-or-seek tournament. <laughs> Which one are we doing right now? We're supposed to go hide. <laughs> oh, my fault. Yeah, uh, the terrifying Griff UK took top honors as Seeker with 44 kills, followed closely by Wu Dang Pig with 43. The winning Hiders team was comprised of Twitch user Johnny Kalaf and legendary Mirage player uh, Groggy or Die, who bamboozled his way into being the last man standing twice, whether hiding or seeking. A good time was found by all. Nice. heard a lot about this apex game <laughs> it'll never catch on should try it sometime you really should and then love it immediately and forever it would make my gaming life a lot easier <laughs> uh you forgot though that at one point writes austin attack 12 kate zade tycoon and austin attack 12 took ninth place. We did forget to mention the ninth place finish by your squad, Austin Tack. Our fault. We are going to get to that in the second hour. It was, <laughs> there was only so much I could fit on my breaking news card, so my, my sincerest apologies for that. 
Austin attack nine for ninth place. Uh, -oh. uh good morning to Element of One. It's good to see you. Nice chat. And hey, it's Brendan is here as well. Nice chat to you as well. Kate Zaid says you know who is really good at Apex but never plays it. Sean. It's true. <laughs> But Sean's good at everything, so you could say that about any game that Sean's not currently or has stopped playing. Is there a game that you've ever played where you're just like, I am god awful at this and I will never play it again? Uh, any fighting game. Oh, that's true. You did say, yeah, your fighting game abilities leave something to be desired. Yeah, yeah. That's it's just never clicked. ample time to try or was it like yeah i tried this once and it was like nah i've tried a few different times a few different fighting games like some and 1v1s it, yeah. and then like smash brothers and such yeah yeah it's just never worked out <laughs> we were never a match uh let's see uh, brendan goes uh this is for my friends that have made it to this corner of TikTok. Um, croissant. Did I, did I say it? It's in all caps. Starts with a Q. Croissant. You might have to give me the uh, phonetics of that because, as you know, Old Hefty, not the best pronouncer of words. <laughs> Pronunciator. Pronunciator of words. <laughs> Close enough, Ryan. Woohoo! I'm so good at this. I should talk into a microphone for a living. Man, there's been so many demos in this game. My gosh. Uh, Element says, so Sean would get smacked in Mortal Kombat. I, I do think Absolutely. there's a chance I could beat Sean in Mortal Kombat. 1v1 me, Sean. Okay. <laughs> Or play me in, play Apex Legends again. I'd rather have that, to be honest. <laughs> you know, it's still free to play. And they've changed all the things about the, uh, the gunplay that you didn't like. All of it. <laughs> did I go uh, celebrating instead of following my own shot? Yes, I did. Because I thought that, that was absolutely <laughs> going in instead of uh, not going in. So I'm sure coaches love to hear that. Why didn't you follow your shot? Because I thought it was going in. Well, it didn't. Well, yeah, but I thought it was. Don't we teach you to follow your shot? Yes. So why didn't you follow your shot? Because it was going in. But did it go in? No. I feel like we're going in circular logic now. Alright, we got birthdays. The same gaming history. If you have a birthday to celebrate, get ready. Because we will celebrate Oop. that coming up. <laughs> <Just a bit. laughs> Alright, the first one was on accident. I can't say that as much for the second one. <laughs> I followed my shot, though. You sure did? <laughs> Give me double boops on a Monday. Nice work. Alright, we're one of life's winners. That feels pretty good. Yeah, two for two. Yeah. Oh, we won the first game, too, huh? Yeah. Really should watch this show. It's pretty amazing well, it, what happens coach also says to have a, a short memory that's no. true coach didn't next say that. game up yeah ted lasso <laughs> says goldfish have a brain of a goldfish be a goldfish you are one of life's winners yeah it is 6 50 west coast time 9 50 at east 2 50 for those watching gms in the afternoon Doo -doo -doo. Uh, i would like to point out uh, hefty's been in double digit scoring in both games so far of rocket league so nice yeah yeah proud of you uh, Element says, I like croissants from BK. I'll, I will admit, fast food croissants are actually still pretty okay. Yeah, they're not bad. I mean, I'm not saying they're the, uh, you know, French bakery or anything, but... Yeah. It's pretty good. We'll allow it. Yeah. Uh, Element says, uh, where we get one of those shirts, Sean? Uh, you have to have my wife make you one. It's really easy. All you have to do, Element, is get married to one of our sisters. <laughs> or wives. I guess if you can if you can make that happen, you get a GMS shirt. 
It does look good, but you know, every polo looks good on you, so I don't know why I'd be surprised. Thanks. Uh, I'm a 3X Sean's wife. <laughs> Let him know. Let him know. All right, uh, yeah, 725 this morning, we're going to talk about European Parliament and some video game and esports strategy. Uh, that's going to happen with uh, Young Shin Vandersight coming up from Kral and Mooring. And at 8.20 a.m. Pacific time today, we're going to talk to the person behind the Cute Avalanche uh, channel on Twitch, which is uh, Sam Proof. So very excited about that. Have a chance to learn more about the Super Bowl coming up at uh, on February 12th. February 12th is when that will happen, so stick around. We have both of those interviews coming up uh, this episode of Gaming Morning Show. But right now, it is time to... Uh, do birthdays this day in gaming history. So if you have a birthday to celebrate, please let us know. Someone who might be getting another year older, whether they're in your family or maybe it's someone you work with. Uh, either way, we're fine with it because we would like to celebrate with you. There's a whole bunch of celebrity birthdays today. Oh my gosh. This list just kept going and going and going and going and so on. And just so on. Just like the out today list. Exactly. And, and I did not abridge my list of birthdays today like Sean did for that exhaustive list of games out today. It's kind of it's kind of embarrassing, Sean. You should have just done the whole thing. I, you know, I, I thought we might be behind the clock, so I just yeah. wanted to have options. Hey, thank you for sticking with the clock. It's important. In radio, the clock matters. Uh, actor Gene Hackman is 93. I did not know Gene Hackman was older than 90. Yeah, apparently. Uh, the last film Hackman appeared in was Welcome to Mooseport back in 2004. That's a long time ago. Um, have you ever seen... Isn't Gene Hackman Hoosiers? Maybe. I think Gene Hackman's a coach in Hoosiers. Believe it. Have you ever seen Hoosiers? No. Never. Yeah, Hoosiers is one of those... Uh, games or games, movies uh, that a lot of people in sports circles often reference, and I've never seen it from start to finish. So, why why am I telling you that? That, that that's actually it would be bigger news if I told you I've seen a movie yeah. from start to at, finish. At least Gene Hackman was in it. At Maybe. least we didn't get there via a tangent. That's true. <laughs> Which we've also done before. That's true. <laughs> uh, actress Vanessa Redgrave turns eighty six. Mm, yeah. Fun fact, her sister, Lynn Redgrave, was also an actress. Is it Lynn Redgrave's birthday, Sean? It sure is not. I mean, it could be. <laughs> Fun fact, they're twins. <laughs> <laughs> twins. I would say they are. Uh, ooh, it's Phil Collins' birthday. Does Phil Collins get credit for a drummer birthday just because one of Phil Collins' songs has one of the most iconic drum fills in it of all time? Uh, let's see. Sure, we'll let him have it. There's no other drummer today. Uh, happy 72nd birthday, Phil Collins. And uh, fun fact, his daughter, Lily currently stars in the Netflix series Emily in Paris. Lily Collins is sh Phil Collins' daughter? <laughs> I think so. No. Yeah. Is it that Lily Collins? I, uh, yes. No. What? No. Yeah. Huh. Learn something new every day. Borrow my pen really quick. Take away. That's pretty okay. Lily. Interesting. I had no clue. Also, back-to-back -back fun facts that are not about the actual person. Yeah, and said about a, a relative named something that starts with an L. Common thread. <laughs> Actor Christian... <laughs> sorry. Actor Christian Bale turns 49. He uh, portrayed the alien Gore in last year's Thor, Love and Thunder. So, long story short, Hefty Daughter wasn't able to participate in a big event on Saturday that she's 
been excited for uh, mm -hmm. because of illness. And so to try to make her feel better, we finally executed the plan of watching Marvel movies that she has never mm -hmm. seen. And so our next one is Thor. Did you watch Iron Man? You watched Iron Man, right? That was the first one. Yeah, so she and her mom have watched Iron Man and Iron Man 2. I watched 20 minutes of Iron Man 2 because I got home late. So, so close. We were. So close. And honestly, this summer, Hefty Daughter and I were supposed to watch a Marvel movie marathon. But life got in the way, Sean. Yeah, yeah. But I'm definitely going to watch Thor. Did you know that, like, there were a whole bunch of, like, long-term plans planted in Iron Man? Yeah. yeah, like, the whole thing started really early on. It wasn't, like, an afterthought. Yeah. You really should check these things out. It's amazing. <laughs> I'll put it on my watch list. <laughs> Actress Olivia Coleman turns 49. Uh, Olivia was replaced by Imelda Staunton as Queen Elizabeth II in the current season of The Crown. <laughs> Hi, hi, Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> uh, actor Wilmer Valderrama turns 43. Uh, he's set to reprise his role of Fez in that 90s show. That 90s show has a debut. It's out. And mm -hmm. I um, am seeing a whole bunch of YouTube shorts that are that 70s or that 90s show in my algorithm. So, yep. yep. Will I watch it? Uh, I don't know. Sports Doc Wife has watched some of it. She uh, she enjoyed it. Actress and singer Lena Hall turns 43. Lena or Lena Hall? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, fun fact Lena won a Tony Award in 2014 for her role in Hedwig and the Angry Inch. How many nominations? Tony's Edition. Hit the music. I don't know if we've ever actually had a chance to play the Tony's Edition of this game. I don't think so. Hmm. Tony Award winner. 2014 for Hedwig and the Angry Inch. 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 <laughs> Inch. Uh, since I don't have a lot of uh, frame of reference for Tony Awards, I'm going to guess that they're harder to win because, you know, you, you're, you're doing a theater production or something, longer runs, so you can't just, like, go from one movie to another movie. I'm going to go, uh... Two nominations for Lena Hall. Uh, with a win of one, Lena Hall has one nomination. She is one for one. Incorrect. Well, no, she is one for one, Bob. I'm incorrect. Make sense? Correct. All right, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Kyle Bunbury. <laughs> nope, that was wrong. Kylie <laughs> Bunbury <laughs> turns 34 today. Uh, Kylie appears as a private detective in the show Big Sky. But Big Sky. Bunbury? Bunbury? Bunbury. Bunbury? You just have to kind of say it more quickly, right? Bunbury. Bunbury. Yeah. And uh, actress Danielle Campbell turns 28 today. Her first TV show appearance was on Prison Break as a young girl who got kidnapped. I hope that's how it was written in the script. <laughs> <laughs> not not that they they were playing young girl, but young girl who got kidnapped. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you already told us that there are no drummer birthdays today. Any other birthdays that catch your attention? Um. Nope. Uh, former okay. pro golfer Payne Stewart, who uh, died, I believe, in a plane crash, uh, had a birthday on January thirtieth was well known for wearing those like pants that kind of bunch up at the calf mm -hmm. are those knickers or something else I have, I have no idea but I see them in my mind now yeah uh okay yeah uh fun fact Payne Stewart's second cousin Patrick Stewart uh was Professor X and one of the uh, Star Trek captains which one we'll never know but it was one of them <laughs> Let's see, uh, Wayne Wilderson has a birthday today as well. Uh, is in Veep, 57 years old today. Uh, we have a 
We have a horn player. William King of the Commodores is 74. Like one of the Viking horn? No idea. William King could probably play that too. Probably. Yeah. And Our- also the Ricola horn. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rip Payne Stewart says Kalef, one of the greats gone way too soon. Yeah, let's give uh, some Kalef golf claps to Payne Stewart. Uh, this day in gaming history, we shift our focus from uh, birthdays to this day in gaming history. Uh, 2002, Sega officially announces, officially announces the discontinuance of the Dreamcast video game system. Dreamcast lasts about as long as the Broncos car did in Rocket League. Broncos car on Bluetooth. <laughs> 2021 to 2022. I feel like the Dreamcast was out for like an 18-month span. Yeah, it struggled. It's too too bad. Other than that controller, that thing was awesome. Yeah, ahead of its time. Uh, 2007, Sony releases Rogue Galaxy that was available for PlayStation 2. Nice. Hey, right, the same gaming history. Succinct, January 30th, 2023. Thank you for being here, and big thanks to our Patreon subscribers. We're celebrating several versions this week. Kakuri, Gonzo Gump, Scott Chick 360, Chrissy Icky, and apparently the uh, Hyde champion of the uh, Kihilo Memorial Apex Legends Hide and Seek Tournament, Groggy or Die. All right, uh, that's a good first hour. I'm, I'm pretty happy. I like the way that we started this week. Yeah, I feel like that's pretty good. Uh, still got a cough, but uh, all, overall, the voice holding up pretty okay. Yeah, it sounds... Uh, the the echo was fun, uh, but other than that, everything has sounded pretty, pretty good. Pretty I feel standard. like Discord sabotaged me. A little bit. It's like, you were gone for so long, I'm going to unmute this side of it. <laughs> we do what we want here now. You were gone. It doesn't matter. I'll, I'll be, be wherever, wherever you, you want, want me, me to be. be. All right, interview about European Parliament <laughs> and video game and esports strategy coming up next hour. We'll also have sports. 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 So stick around. More Gaming Morning Show is on the way. Thank you for being with us wherever you may be. It is January 30th, 2023, and this is Gaming Morning Show on Facebook Gaming, Twitch, YouTube, GamingMorningShow.tv. depends on who plays it what if they're a master kazoo player and they play a beautiful ballad so you go do ballad it's pretty good i really wish i had known careless whisper was a a saxophone when i was actually playing the saxophone (laughs) might have given it some staying power with me (laughs) Or you would have done anything you can to just learn that one song. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, for this song, got to get ready for the uh, basketball game. Uh, let's play We Got the Beat by the Go-Go's. Okay, sounds good. All right, go saxophones. <laughs> I don't think that's how it goes. <laughs> I'm crushing it right now is what I would say in my head in that moment. And they came to me. <laughs> All right, uh, ready uh, to play the intro theme to NBA on NBC. It was the NBA Finals uh, of 1996. Let's take you back to Gary Payton's Sonics and uh, Michael Jordan's Bulls. Here we go. Three, two, one. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. boom. 
bum bum. <laughs> bum 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 bum. <laughs> do 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 do. Do 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 do. do, do, do. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> But tonight on Monday Night Football, it's the Chicago Bulls and the Seattle Superphonics. Superphonics is what I just said. I just said the Seattle Superphonics. If only. Bum. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. do. Nailed it. But tonight on Monday Night Football, it's the Chicago Bulls and the Seattle Superphonics. Superphonics is what I just said. I just said the Seattle Superphonics. If only. If the Supersonics ever come back to Seattle, but because I know Superphonic now, there's a good chance it's I may gonna, refer to them as the Superphonics. It's never going to work. Hey, Sean, uh, I got tickets to the Phonics game tonight. You want to go? <laughs> sure do. One eight hundred A B C D E F G. Go phonics. I'm hooked. <laughs> For expenses. Uh, to fulfillment. You just send them right over to fulfillment, oh. and then you'll be good. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Bad feeling about this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think we lost your captions, Sean. Oh, so sad. Rest in. But Rest what is peace. really entertaining is uh, everything that I am saying is also showing up in Theo's. So basically, <laughs> I know. So basically, uh, I'm ventriloquisting <laughs> Theo. Yourself? Yeah. Oh, are you or me? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Uh, so as I talk, um, the upper left is my puppet. <laughs> there we go. There. Now, now, now I'm able to move the puppet. So. Hello, Theo. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's amazing. It's wonderful to be back on the show and look at my wonderful tropical background. So good. <laughs> what <are> you eating? <laughs> I'm just out the trash. I'm just out the trash. <laughs> Mickey burgers over and over Theo, and over again. Theo just, just just eats churros the whole time. <laughs> well, churros is definitely on They're the top so of the list. Because yep. there are no churros that taste like Disneyland churros. It's true. You know, and, and, and I hate to say it, but, you know, even the one in the streets that I get here in L.A., which are delicious <laughs> and come from the originators, probably. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> there's something about Disneyland churros. And then I do enjoy the turkey legs. Mm -hmm. Those are yummy, mm -hmm. too. And, and soup and the bread bowls. Ooh. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Now I'm just hungry. I know. <laughs> Imagine gaming morning. It's never show. happened on this show before. Yeah. <laughs> What's for breakfast? Uh, it is now 750 West Coast, 1050 out east, 350 for those watching GMS in the afternoon. Oh. Oh, yes. If you want to get specific on Monday through Friday and sometimes after dark 
daily theme with a question mark. We got gaming news and sports and Bob. Hefty Austin Mike and Sean the heartthrob. I couldn't imagine any other place to go than to start the day with the gaming morning show. The Seattle Superphonics. Coming up on Gaming Morning Show, today's interview and sports. Find GMS on Facebook Gaming, Twitch, YouTube, and GamingMorningShow.tv. Time for hour number two, right now. Mm -hmm. Morning! Gamer, welcome back. Gaming Morning Show continues. Thank you so much for being with us wherever you may be. Facebook Gaming, Twitch, YouTube, Twitter Spaces, and at GamingMorningShow.tv. I am Hefty Goof. That is Sports.Gaming, left side of your screen. We're so glad that you're here. Monday, January 30th, 2023. That means we have two more days of uh, January, including today. Tomorrow at 8 p.m. Pacific time, we are scheduled to have a GMS Tuesday Nights, GMS Fudge Village uh however i think sean and i need to meet up and make sure we can all be in the same spot because i hadn't really thought of that yet so yeah, we should probably do some testing yeah we'll figure out what we can do you can also follow us on instagram gaming morning show is our handle there and we usually post things like the gaming morning show morning gaming news uh after the show usually around 10 30 p.m Pacific, or AM Pacific time. Hashtag GMS Morning Gaming News. Uh, how are you? How was your weekend? Did you have a pretty solid weekend? Are you you kind of feeling good? Kind of back in the swing of daily in and out life. How how are you been? I haven't seen you forever. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, weekend was good. It was real busy. Uh, that event uh, we brought up earlier was Saturday, um, and in between events on saturday i filled that with sitting at a dealership waiting for uh, my car and so saturday was kind of a wash and then yesterday we spent the whole day up in portland doing fun stuff um so it was a good day but exhausting so we at the end of the weekend we were like oh shoot we forgot to you know relax at all so we're, we're tired but all good things <laughs> yeah the, the whole uh weekend uh, where you're supposed to recoup your energy from a, all the long week, you did not complete that assignment. Didn't didn't do that at all. So, yeah. Um, yeah. No, I I'm I'm doing pretty okay. Went and watched uh, your Calgary Flames beat your Seattle Kraken on uh, Friday night, which was awesome. Uh, Flames responded so well in that game. It was one of those games where it was like, after they scored their second goal, the Flames, there was like no concern. Like the rest of the game just went exactly. How you would hope it was very relaxing and calm yeah they 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 looked in control uh, for a majority of that game it was good. just like they have all season long am i right <laughs> uh and then yesterday i watched the uh, uh afc and nfc championships the uh, nfl playoffs we'll talk more about that coming up in sports at about 7 50 a.m pacific time today uh and i'm sure you can imagine i was incredibly relaxed the whole time Hanging out, just uh, not a care in the world. Numerous times, hefty wife goes, "What is wrong with you?" I'm like, "I just can't have him win another Super Bowl." So, I'll draw some parallels again. We'll wait till sports. Now's not the time. I'm not ready to talk about it. So, uh, our question of the day is National Croissant Day. Croissant. What's the best way to have a croissant? Uh, curious. You said just straight out of the oven from the bakery. You're okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Base croissant. Base croissant is fantastic. If it's warm and fresh, nice and flaky, layered, mm, buttery, delicious. <laughs> I said base croissant. Captions gave me base croissant as in as opposed to the soprano croissant. <laughs> it's a, that's a big croissant. <laughs> base croissant. Also, apparently, uh, we got a voice capitalized, a, a the voice capitalized. Uh, when talking about things, uh, no trademark, as Kalaf put it, but in recognition of greatness, the voice. <laughs> uh, but Brendan says, I, I definitely sound better. I feel like uh, both of our energy levels are up, which is nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, getting back to normal. That's good. Yeah. I mean, I know you got hit with uh, COVID, and you know that definitely can have a lot of fatigue. But 
I feel like this cold that I've had as of late definitely is one of the most fatiguing colds that I've had where I'm just like worn out, which makes me wonder if I just never tested positive, but who knows? It, it's definitely possible. Yeah. It happens. So, but here we are and we're back. And so uh, hopefully the whole uh, week we can continue to uh, play games. Uh, tomorrow, Hamster Playground will be on the schedule and then we can play It Takes Two again on Work Together mm. Wednesday, which will be nice. Yes. So, love that game. Uh, we'll be playing Five Questions GMS, so not expecting to do any Minecraft Monday today. However, in the final hour, crew will finally get a chance to continue adding to our Don't Let the Person Floating from the Balloons Fall in the Monster's Mouth record, because we kind of put that on hiatus whilst Sean was out. So, Yeah, that'll be fun. So if you're uh, ready to guess words and letters, we're going to need you, so please stand by coming up around 8 o'clock this morning. Down says D. Not yet, Downs. E easy. In an hour we'll, from now. We'll put it in the bank, though. We can we can pull that out when it's time. <laughs> Just in case we need we need a D for the the game where the D rarely hits. <laughs> okay. It's good to know we banked one. D. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yeah, we'll talk to uh, we'll talk to the uh, attorney from. Kroll and uh, Morning, that's uh, Young Shin Vandersype, that's coming up uh, about 7.25, about 10 minutes from now. Uh, there's a piece called The European Parliament Calls for a Long-Term European Video Game and Esports Strategy. This is going to be uh, a difficult one because we do you know, shorter interviews and this subject is far more complex, so please know that we're going to be giving you an intro into this topic as opposed to uh, a full-blown outlook on everything you need to know. It's going to be introductory. So, how's chat doing this morning? Fantastic. <laughs> uh, Downs guess D. Kalaf took the big swing for Dandelion, and Downs says Dundelion? Dundelion. Dundelion? Dundelion, Dundelion, Dundelion. It's like the intro to the Big and Rich song, isn't it? <laughs> it's good to be on the air. Yeah. Um, I went to uh, the University of Washington basketball arena for the first time uh, last week as well. And that was... That was new. I had never been in there before. It's like... It's like a modern facility put into, like... I wonder if it's, that's like going to Corvallis where Oregon State plays, where you have Gill Coliseum, which is like 4,000 years old, but then they have like the biggest scoreboard in the Pac-12. I wonder if they're very similar experiences. <laughs> yeah, sounds like it. But, yeah. Uh, so we're two for two in Rocket League games this morning, which is nice. Uh, hopefully I can get over the uh, three-digit score threshold in this particular <laughs> game. I'm going to still say my, my best way to have a croissant, since that's technically our question today, is going to be the cold croissant sandwich from Costco. And I'm sure those aren't like the highest quality croissants, but man, they are good. Like, I don't know. And I know that they come with, like, a honey mustard or something as a sauce on the side, which I'm not going to say yes to. But Oh, you don't you don't put that on? No, I don't. <laughs> I did opt for, um, from, like, more of a burger place. I did opt for, like, uh, Korean barbecue steak bites yesterday because we had ordered something per the request of Hefty Daughter. And it's more of a traditional burger place, but I didn't want to have just a burger. And so uh, went with like rice on the side and some Korean barbecue steak bites. It was pretty pretty okay. And they were a little bit saucy. A little wow. bit. Not a, a lot bit. of it. But... Just a tad of sauce. Yes. Uh, Kalaf is questioning me. Cold croissants? 
Yeah, croissants is like a, a vehicle for a sandwich is really good. I mean, I think they're, they are better warm, so that's worth mentioning, but still pretty okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Was that a Flora's Lava celebration? I think so. And like, I think the at, cars... At least the floor, uh, the floor was lava. <laughs> <laughs> not necessarily in honor of the TV show on Netflix, right. but... What may not have been branded. But... Yeah. I'm just trying to think. So this was Elemental. Is that... That's not an Elemental one, right? No, I don't think so. I like how a lot of the uh, the cars, like in the background, faded away, like start falling into the into the lava. That's pretty good. <laughs> I remember. I just saw the chat. Uh, someone saying thanks, thanks, thanks. But I remember last week, weren't we playing where someone kept spamming the "what a save" thing, and then our <laughs> our third random teammate like came to our defense. It was great. Yeah. A hefty son doesn't get access to a quick chat even in a <laughs> Rocket League, but I do. And so out of habit, we'll be playing together. I'll be spamming this is Rocket League. And he'd be like, why do you always say that? And I was like, if you know, you <laughs> Cause know. Because it's, it's Rocket League. Because <laughs> this is Rocket League, my shot. Uh, Kalef says, huh. I normally like my croissants like I like my exes. Hot and flaky. <laughs> Uh, it's good to have you back, Kayla. <laughs> why didn't why didn't you just stay with them? Uh, always were flaky. Oh, nice save. Back. Ah! I was so close, but yet so far, Lincoln Park. <laughs> That's a great setup. Nice. Seriously, watch this setup. Perfect. Nice arcing spot. Bam. Through there. You cl you cleared the way. I did. All right, we got into this game a little bit late, so we may actually have to drop out a little bit early to accommodate our interview. So, especially because the score's tied at two-two, would hate for us to go into overtime. <laughs> we both, yeah, like hardcore on that one. <laughs> I got credit for a save. I, see again, I love the saves in this game because it knows if it's going in. Yeah. It's a computer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call it there. It's time for our interview. We're going to talk about European Parliament and video game and esports strategy next on Gaming Morning Show.
Gaming Morning Show continues. Thank you for being with us. It is the Monday edition of the show and excited to have our interview guest today as we have a chance to talk about European Parliament and a long-term European video game and esports strategy. Youngshin Vandersijp joins us today, attorney uh, with Kral and Mooring, and thank you for being part of the show today because uh, this is one of those interviews that is great and also difficult because we only have about five minutes or so where we talk to our guests when we do uh, interviews on Gaming Morning Show. And so this is a complex thing. We're going to link to the piece uh, that you wrote for uh, your website to talk about this, but give us at least uh, an executive summary. What is the resolution all about? Uh, well, the resolution calls for a long-term European video game and esports strategy. And with this resolution, the European Parliament uh, wants to encourage the other European institutions uh, to acknowledge the value of the gaming ecosystem um, as a major cultural and creative industry with strong potential and um, well, strong potential for further growth and innovation. Uh, what's the legal value of a resolution like this? And uh, why does the Parliament see potential uh, in this sector? Uh, well, the legal value, um, not so much legally. It's a non-binding statement. Um, so it doesn't have the legal strength of a real law, um, such as a regulation or a directive. Uh, but it's used to influence the law and, and uh, policy making decisions of the European Commission and of the Council. And yeah, in general, um, resolutions raise awareness and, and mobilize um, public opinion. And it is uh, actually an important symbolic uh, threshold that has been crossed here um, because esports and gaming is now clearly on the agenda of the European institutions. Um, so we can look forward to legis uh, legislative um, initiatives in the future. Um, well, your the second part of your question. So, um, the potential, like, well, what does um, the European um, I think that, uh, Young Shin, I think if you'll uh, do us a favor and uh, kill your your video, just because uh, the audio is not coming through as well as we would like. Uh, then we can hear the second part. You were starting to talk a little bit about why does the European Parliament see potential in the sector? Uh, if you want to go ahead and, and stop sending us video, then we'll be able to hear your answer as well. That would be helpful, please. Uh, so I didn't hear, sorry, what? Uh, excuse me? Uh, we are just asking you if you could uh, turn off the camera because I think the bandwidth isn't uh, working well enough to send both video and audio. So if you want to stop your camera's connection really quick and... Uh, kind of talk more about, you know, you were sharing why does the European Parliament see potential in the sector? Okay, yes. Um, I hope you can hear me better now. Um, so there is, um, yeah, steep continued growth in numbers uh, of gamers worldwide. Um, well, this combined with their increased engagement and spending habits, uh, it's yeah very um, attractive, let's say, for the European Parliament. And um, the... Parliament also mentions uh, the development of uh, new technologies and 
the continued rise of streaming and content creation. Uh, so this is why they, there is a need for this European strategy. And then uh, you uh, are able to, to look more to the audience. You're able to read more about this uh, on the website, uh, Kral Dat, uh, Law. Um, the European Parliament calls for long-term European video game and esports strategy. You said, uh, Young Shin, that the resolution uh, makes it a strategic point to improve the number of women involved in the gaming and esports sector. Why is this so important? Well, I believe that having uh, more women in the video gaming uh, sector would definitely uh, bring up an, a number of benefits. Um, but the sector is strongly, uh, well, increasing and reaching more and more people, and so also women, uh, and this should also be women. And the time that gaming and, and esports um, is only something for teenage boys who lock themselves up in a basement is long gone. Everybody knows that. Uh, women already make up a significant uh, portion of the gaming market and, and they should be further promoted. And in this context, um, just an example, uh, I like that for the new Clash Royale banners, uh, Supercell engaged a really good female uh, artist for the designs and I don't think that any man could have done uh, a better job. So for me, it's, it's not really about uh, men or women, it's more about having the right person in the right job. Um, but then, on the other hand, um, being a little more inclusive uh, really wouldn't hurt the sector. Appreciate uh, that insight, and uh, we're going to share this on our YouTube page. So if you missed any of the interview, uh, you certainly can. How can people, you know, what would be a, a good resource for people to continue to learn more about this topic, whether that's following you or maybe uh, another resource that you could recommend for us? Uh, well, we're definitely uh, following this up very closely, like at, at Gravel and Mooring, of course, uh, but also the Belgian Esports Federation. And I think that any um, national esports federation in Europe is following this very closely. So I, I think that you will get the information there or directly from the European institutions, of course. Youngshin van der Seip, uh, attorney, IT law, Kral and Mooring LLP. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today on Gaming Morning Show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, and, uh, yeah, inclusivity, uh, that last point, I think, is one of my takeaways uh, from the interview, uh, certainly, but having a chance to learn more about why this particular resolution exists. I mean, specifically what it's about, uh, because I will admit, you know, I, I click on this link to read uh, the entire piece um, that Young Shin wrote on uh, the attorney or the uh, law firm's website. And I will admit, I'm one of those people who kind of get lost in a lot of words and resolutions clearly have a lot of detail in what they, they put in text. And so uh, being able to hear it uh, is super helpful for me as well. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a fantastic interview. A lot of good information. Uh, so you can find out more. Uh, please click that link if you want to read more about uh, the resolution. And again, um, they're going to continue. Uh, Young Shin is going to continue as well uh, following that particular resolution and kind of where it goes. Uh, kind of the potential, as we talked about, and the legal value of such a resolution uh, of the European Parliament. So, all right. Uh, that is uh, 7.35 on this morning radio show that plays games. Are you going to stick around or do you got to come back a little bit? I'll come back in a little bit. All right. So goodbye to Sean. Stay. Uh, Bear Bear will be here, which is exciting. Coming up in about an hour from now, we're going to talk to Sam Proof, uh, the person behind the cute avalanche uh, stream on Twitch. And if you've never been there, it's it's one of those cool streams where you have a chance to like control the cameras and move things around and uh it's all about you know kittens so that's pretty exciting i kind of spy something that bear bear put up in the window so we'll show you that coming up in sports because it is relevant to what happened yesterday in the afc and nfc championship games so pretty excited to show you that in about 15 minutes from now uh kate zaid uh, says have we been dating the same people Again, uh, Kalaf had said, I normally like my croissants like I like my exes hot and flaky. Uh, and then Kalaf said, for your sake, I hope not. I like that. Fantastic job in chat. You're doing you're doing great work today, just so you know, Kalaf. Uh, our head of research and development never, never lets us down. So, uh, What other croissant-related uh, type of conversation do you want to have today? This is a fact... Uh, or at least some anecdotes from nationaldaycalendar.com. The key to a perfect croissant is laminating the dough 
You laminate the dough by folding butter into the mixture, creating multiple thin layers of butter and dough. The result is a mouth-watering flaky crust and airy body. Legend surrounds the pastry, as is often the case with popular worldly treats. What is known is that the crescent-shaped breads have been found around the world for ages. One of these were the Kip Furl, which originated in Austria as far back as the 13th century. K-I-P-F-E-R-L, Kip Furl. Uh, this uh, non-laminated bread is more like a roll. Credit for the croissant we know today is given to an Austrian military officer, August Zhang. In 1839, he opened a, uh, a bakery in Paris, introducing France to Viennese baking techniques. So that's from nationaldaycalendar.com if you're looking for more uh, croissant-related anecdotes. So uh, Today is also National Bubble Wrap Day. And I don't know if you have... Is it propensity? The word I'm looking for? Where when you have bubble wrap... You start to like to pop the bubbles. I do. Big fan of it. Um, sometimes you get like the really like big bubble bubble wrap as opposed to like the itty bitty ones. That's super fun. Big fan. Big fan. Uh, but those are the only two days of the day from National Day Calendar. There were others, uh, but we didn't have those. Uh, Kate's a big fan of bubble wrap. Love bubble wrap. I mean, you can do the whole put it on the floor and stomp on it kind of thing. But as much as I love bubble wrap, I don't like popping balloons. We learned this. Uh, Sean's niece had a birthday party recently, and they had a whole bunch of balloons. And then everyone started to want to uh, pop them. And it was not it was not something I was enjoying. There's something about like the suspense of a balloon about to pop. Not a big fan of. Kind of bothers me. But bubble wrap, pretty okay with that. Wait, so Kalaf just put a link in chat. Bubblespop.netlify.app. There's a bubble popping web app. Interesting. And, th and that one's safe. We don't have to worry about clicking it and going to something spammy. Kalaf, always important. Please do not Google that, especially at work. All right, it's 7.38 on this morning radio show that plays games. Let's tell you uh, what we're tracking at this hour. You can news if you want to. Uh, earlier in the show, we had an opportunity to share with you uh, something very close to our hearts, and that was the survival of a serval that spent six months in the Missouri wilderness. And now, this one's a pretty good story. Sean told us that uh, Sean had already heard this story, and it's about a YouTuber whose goldfish, or fish, it was a beta fish, uh, ended up getting their credit card information posted during a YouTube stream. Not a good thing. Uh, all right, here's the details on the story. Ben Hooper of UPI writes that a fish spends owner's money reveals credit card info on a YouTube stream. Uh, this Japanese YouTuber created a custom setup to allow his pet fish to play Pokemon on his Nintendo Switch, but a malfunction led the goldfish to spending money at the eShop and revealing its owner's credit card information. Did it on a live stream. Uh, this YouTuber, M-U-T-E-K-I-M-A-R-U, Mook Kiramu, or Maurice, runs a channel on a video sharing site where the fish plays various games in the Pokemon franchise. The beta fish controls the game by swimming to different areas of the tank, which have been outfitted with sensors to simulate pushing the buttons on Maurice's Nintendo Switch. Maurice set up the system to allow the fish to play Pokemon Violet, which was one of the latest entries in the series, but a malfunction during the gameplay led the Nintendo Switch returning to its home screen, and from there, the fish's movements caused the Nintendo eShop to open, and the pet spent $4 of its owner's money to buy points. The fish also revealed Maurice's credit card information on the live stream. The fish also managed to download an app to play Nintendo 64 games, spent reward currency on a new avatar, I requested a confirmation from email from PayPal and changed Maurice's account name from Moot Kiramu Mit Mit Mut Nope Mu to Kimaru to Rowa wa 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 R O W A W A W A W A
Kalaps says, oh, it was a beta fish. Absolutely on brand for doxing its owner and committing credit card fraud. More like an alpha fish, am I right? Beep boop beep boop. There you go. 741. All right, coming up at 820, we're going to play Five Questions GMS with Sam Proof as we look at the Super Bowl event for Cute Avalanche coming up on February 12th. That is on the way on this morning radio show that plays games. Nice chat. Good morning to Dungeon Meowster KJ. It is good to see you. Thank you for being here. Uh, today we're asking you about croissants. It's National Croissant Day. And so we're learning about all sorts of things about chat this morning. Apparently, Kate Zaid dates the same people that Kalaf did. Also, that we uh, found a bubble popping app. Uh, Kalaf is also uh, clocking out at this stage. So, has things to do today. Hey, uh, Kalaf, take the rest of the day off. You've done enough. Sounds like uh, many folks in chat enjoyed the Kiki Low Hide and Seek Apex Legends tournament this past weekend. And then in sports, we'll talk about uh, the NFC and AFC championships, which kind of took up my entire Sunday. Probably more than they needed to, to be honest. I could have had a lot more relaxing of a Sunday if I had just not watched football, but here we are. Nice job. What a save. And in transition, we score. Look at that. Just like we thought would happen. Just like we thought. Um, yeah, the croissant sandwiches from Costco, big fan. Chocolate croissants are very delicious, especially when they're either fresh or, and this is going to be definitely a hefty goof food take, but also when, um, you get like a chocolate croissant where the chocolate inside is kind of hardened and it kind of becomes almost like a a candy bar. I don't know. I kind of like that. Like the Starbucks croissants are probably not the world's most, you know, amazing baked goods. But they are something that I do enjoy. And you can get them warmed. Like that's an option when you order them is would you like to have them warmed, which is probably how most people order chocolate croissants because the inside then kind of becomes a little more gooey chocolate as opposed to you know crunchy but I kind of like that candy feel on croissants candy bar feel it's almost like having like a a, a, a harder Hershey's bar inside a, a croissant Maybe, th maybe there's like a s'mores element to it. Because you know like when you bite into s'mores? But I guess some, the chocolate in that instance though is, again, it's kind of gooey or, or soft. I don't know. I, it's kind of like having chocolate chips inside a croissant. But I just don't like a lot of baked goods warmer. Unless it's literally like out of the oven. Fresh. So, you know, instead of like warming up pies or something like that. I'd rather have like the refrigerated pie. I'm guessing that's not the case for most, but certainly a preference for me. I'm curious if, uh, because that fish changed that person's name on live stream, I wonder if they got it back because there's a chance that they have to put, like, usernames on hold or something for some semblance of time, I would imagine. Because if that person, you know, is a well-known internet streamer, and they have that username, then I imagine if they changed it on stream accidentally, like this fish did, with to raw wah 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 Could somebody then go through and take that person's original name or does it not happen that fast I, that's why i think there has to be a safeguard but then can can maurice not change the name back for like 30 days 
So I'm sure you could contact like Nintendo support or something and they might be able to do something special to hold it. But then if they could do that, wouldn't they be able to just probably change it back ahead of the window? I don't know. I made a good play on the goalie here. Didn't get a demo, but I got a, a bump away, which was nice. Uh, anyone watch shows this weekend? Last of Us was on Sunday. I did try to invite Hefty Wife to watch Last of Us with me so that I would have a way to be more consistent in watching it week to week. A hefty wife has declined. So there will be no goofs watch party of that show. I really do want to see it. Sunday nights are tough, especially until the Super Bowl is over. Then maybe after that I'll catch up. I am better at watching shows, though, in, you know, binge mode. Because if I wait a week, as much as I like that model better because you get like the week to week week cliffhangers I mean I genuinely like that aspect better you know kind of the the discussion around everything and what's going to happen next if I can't watch it in, in more of a I don't know expedited time span then I'll likely never finish it and that's the, that's the problem is I want to be able to kind of get to a conclusion so I don't know. Oh, also, it didn't help uh, that I went to go log into uh, HBO Max, and because the person who um, whose HBO Max login I use is uh, on like a relocation for a couple of months, uh, they're living in a different state for two months. They decided to pause their TV service at their actual house, and because of that, that actually took away our HBO Max login. So I'm gonna have to try to find somebody else's login to use or sign up for it myself which I don't know if I really want to do but here we are uh, KLF said uh, I just keep it <laughs> lol row wah 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 clearly corrected us as to its real name I mean I think the beta fish since that apparently is kind of the shtick on this YouTube channel since the beta fish is already you know playing games anyway I think the beta fish should get its own name now so just keep it for the beta fish uh, Keen Zane said, I've started watching The Walking Dead. I'm a decade late. I'm watching a show. Ah, that's, it didn't wrap up. I don't, neither did Walking Dead. I mean, I'm, I'm watching a show that was on a similar timeline. I'm watching the USA show Suits, which I think started in 2012, and its last episode was 2019. And so I even messaged somebody who was asking for show recommendations because they travel a lot for work, and I recommended Suits, and they had already seen it, which they're like... Did you not get with the program when it was on? I was like, no, no, I did not. So, so yeah, here we are. I love binge watching shows. I, it just works better for me because if I have the hour to watch one episode, I probably have a couple of hours that I can watch multiple episodes. So yeah, it works better for me. Uh, it's now 7.49 West Coast time. It's 10.49 out East and it's 3.49 for those watching GMS in the UK. Doo -doo -doo. Akilaf says, I can't start watching a show unless the series has concluded. Miss me with that tune in next week silliness. Back in my day, that was the only way we could watch shows. Uh, Keith Anthony says, I'm back. The croissants talk made me want to uh, make pastry. I'm not making croissants, but I'm t uh, making a leek and potato pie. Well, first and foremost. Remember, if you're getting food, you must show and tell when you come back. So please throw that in our Discord, which you can find at GamingMorningShow.tv and clicking on the Where to Find GMS, or you can go on that link right there. Kate Zade says, but not the entire series. I'll watch a season. Yes. Well, no. Actually, Kate, I'll probably watch the whole entire series over the course of a couple of months. Keith Anthony says, I'm currently watching Netflix series Kaleidoscope. How is it? And what's it about? Definitely uh, invited to share. Uh, right now, it's time for sports. Uh, sports is always brought to you by King Gray. And... As uh, one specific uh, staff member of GMS has been waiting for the entire season, it is time to 
to crown them champions. I am JF Downs has taken on the Philadelphia Eagles as Downs' NFL team. Maybe on the recommendation of Look It's Mike O. And the Philadelphia Eagles yesterday beat a team that had no quarterback to become NFC champions. Your Philadelphia Eagles beat San Francisco 31 to 7. Fly, Eagles, fly on the road to victory. Bear Bear has an Eagles banner in the Bear Bear window. You may not have thought that Sean's studio was Eagles country, but Bear Bear is now committed to your Philadelphia Eagles. Go Birds from Bear Bear. I'm going to see if Sean can put that as like a necklace. See if, see if Bear Bear can wear it as a necklace. Uh, you have my full-fledged support because after the Eagles beat San Francisco, the starting quarterback for the 49ers, Brock Purdy, got hurt trying to throw the football. Took a sack, kind of maybe hyperextended like a ligament in the elbow. Uh, it was like... I, I don't think the 49ers tried a pass play in the second half, so... Congratulations to the Eagles, the best team in the NFC all year long. They will face Kansas City Chiefs. Yesterday, a 23-20 win for the home team. A last-second field goal after a definitely deserved 15-yard penalty on a late hit. Set the uh, Chiefs up for a shorter field goal, a 45-yard kick. Happened with three seconds to go, and the... Uh, Chiefs are back in the Super Bowl for the third time in four years. I uh, am now very, very much an Eagles fan. So I can't have the Chiefs win another Super Bowl. So, our everything Bengals are out. If they only could have scored, that would have been amazing. Bengals had the ball left with like four minutes or so left. Joe Burrow couldn't do it. And said Mahomes got the bas uh, the uh, football back, and here we go. So, <sighs> Town says he got a little arm boo boo. I mean, even the backup quarterback, what Josh Johnson, former Broncos legend Josh Johnson, uh, got a concussion. So they really had no no quarterback. Uh, this a couple of good storylines for the Super Bowl. I will admit this is nice. You have two brothers playing for the first time against each other in the Super Bowl with uh, Jason Kelsey, the center for the Eagles, and Travis Kelsey, the uh, tight end for the Chiefs, and then Andy Reid was the longtime coach of the Eagles and now has been the longtime coach of the Chiefs. So you get a little bit of the Andy Reid Bowl as well. So there you go. So uh, fly, Eagles, fly on the road to victory. That's what we need. Super Bowl two weeks from yesterday. It's not going to be a stress-free one either. I'm going to have to care the whole entire time, which is frustrating. But here we are. Uh, Kate Zade says, got to hop off. Bosses gave me work to do. Have a great show. Thank you very much. You can find Kate Zade streaming on TikTok tomorrow for sure at uh, this address. So you can click there and uh, see all progress related to a Bloodhound Apex Legends cosplay. Uh, back to the uh, Kaleidoscope show. Keith Anthony says it's about a gang of bank robbers that plan to rob a vault containing four billion unregistered dollars. But the best thing about it, there's eight episodes total, and it makes sense in any order I've uh, it's watched. But episode eight is always the finale. Netflix recommends a personalized order you watch based on what you watch on Netflix. Interesting. Interesting. I think I had heard about that. Hmm. Check it out wherever Netflix is sold. All right, final hour crew coming up next. We'll talk to. Sam Proof, the uh, creator behind the Cute Avalanche you, uh, Twitch channel, where you can uh, also support them in their uh, quest to help foster kittens. Uh, they focus very much on cats that are eight weeks uh, old or younger and help them uh, find homes. They've saved over 135-plus cats from the streets and shelters of Los Angeles. We'll have that coming up. 
uh, next hour at 8.20 a.m. Pacific time. And then we'll wrap things up on this Monday, Monday, January 30th, 2023. If you're listening on Twitter Spaces, have a great rest of your day. For those who are with us on Facebook Gaming, Twitch, YouTube, and at GamingMorningShow.tv, Final Hour Crew is next.
game that feels like hell Remember to still be humble When people ask what's going on around me She'd like to play with the other ones But she's frightened of the sun All she wants is a little love And a little 